let's make a pot holder with the pot holder loom. This is an 18 peg loom and we're going to make the zigzag twill pot holder design. The zigzag twill pot holder uses a fun two color design in basic twill. These hot pads take just minutes to weave and make wonderful gifts. This reversible pot holder uses two colors and is an easy beginner project. You can find a detailed chart on this design at Piglet's Pot Holder Patterns. This is the zigzag twill pot holder 18 peg shared with permission under Creative Commons. Let's begin our tutorial. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This pattern has written instructions and links to the right and left-handed video tutorials for your convenience, as well as a link to the chart that we referred to for this pattern. So visit our link down in the video description below for a link to our blog. If you'd like to purchase an ad-free version, you can get that on our Ravelry and Etsy stores, but we will not be publishing the Creative Commons chart. There will be a link in that PDF though. We will have fully written instructions for each pattern that we make in this series. For materials, you're going to need your weaving loom for pot holders. This is a 3 8 inch spacing and it has a more narrow spacing than others. As long as you have 18 pegs across, you can work this pattern. It will just have a slightly different size than the one I'm showing here today. This one has 72 pegs all around, so 18 pegs on each end multiplied times 4 is 72. This loom in particular is a Cindy Wood loom and I'm working with their 3 8 inch small 7 inch pot holder loom. It makes roughly a um, 5 by 5 inch square. It comes uh, with your weaving tool and you're also going to need a crochet hook for binding off around your pot holder. You're also going to need 36 cotton loops for the seven inch loom. So it's loops that work with whatever loom you're using. We're working with color A, which is 18 loops of orange and color B, which is 18 loops of purple. I recommend using contrasting colors to really make your design pop out. All right, let's begin. So we're going to begin with the warp yarn. Uh, we're going to be placing all color A loops, which is orange, of course, from uh, top to bottom or bottom to top. You can place them um, either way as you go uh, using all pegs. So just work your way across. All of the pegs in the warp are the same color, so you can start from either end. That works just fine and you can trim um, any extra little pieces like this that come out um, with your scissors now uh, after you get them on, or you can do them later on. Pause your video as you need. All right, so this is going to have a eight row repeat. So we're gonna work eight rows and then that um, row repeat will be repeated one more time and then we'll just have a few rows left. Of course, you're gonna have 18 rows down because there's 18 uh, pegs across here. Um, I like to go ahead and lift all of these up to the top so I can fit my fingers underneath. And as always, I usually just work it with my fingers if I need to and I don't use the tool um, unless I have to and I run out of space. I usually generally will do the bottom few with the tool uh, unless it becomes um, harder depending upon the um, pattern. All right, so row one, we're gonna be working with um, all color B loops on the weave here. Row one, we're going to weave over two and under two. When I say we go over two, we're actually gonna be going over um, one of these loops. And so don't count these as two, this is gonna count as one. And then this next set from this next peg is going to be the two. So this is one and two. So it looks like four of these, but just count them as one, one cotton loop. So we're going over these two and then under the next two. So you can find these next two, lift up and pull your loop under those, and then place it on that very first peg and pull. All right, once in this pattern, once you get the first few um, 
pegs established, you're going to see that it's just going to skip every other um, every other two or two pegs. So um, two loops. So we're going over two loops, under two loops, over two loops, and then we find the next two and go under, and then over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, and then place. All right. That's pretty simple. The next one, we're going to go uh, over one and then weave under two, over two. So you first have to establish that first, very first part of the pattern, then you'll see the repeat um, go easily. So we're gonna weave over just one and we're gonna go under these next two. And go ahead and place that on. And then we're going to go over two, under two. So over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, and then the last one is under one, okay? So you see it's now shifted over. These purples look like a little stair step. All right, row three, we're going to go under two, over two. So under these first two here, and then place your loop, and then you've got it. You're now gonna go over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two. You're just repeating this till the very end. Over two, and under two. There we go, we've got three little stair steps. Row four, we're going to offset by one, just as we did in row two. So uh, in row four, we're gonna weave under one and over two. So under one, place that loop on, and then over two, under two. Over two, under two. Over two, under two, over two, under two, and over the remaining one and place that. That's your first four rows. Pretty simple. Row five, we're gonna go under two, over two. Go under the first two, place it, and keep going in that pattern. Over and under two, all the way across, and you end going under the last two. Place it. Make sure to not twist your um, your loops here. Row six, we're gonna go over one and then start the um, two and two. So we're gonna go over the first one, under the next two. Let's place that. And then over two, under two. You can see why using your fingers on this one is really pretty easy and simple. And then the last one remaining is under one in place. And just look over here, make sure I'm not skipping any. So that is row six. And seven, we're gonna go over two, under two. So over those first two in place. And keep going all the way across, repeating. And you'll end with over two on this one. All right, row eight. There we go, let me just sniff that while I'm seeing it. You see that little piece of white? I don't know if you can see that, but I do. There we go, that's that elastic. All right, and row eight, uh, this is the last in our four, our eight row repeat. We're gonna weave over one and then, oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna weave under one and then over two, under two. So under one, over two, under two, and continue across, and then you'll have one loop left. And you're gonna go over that last one. All right, so uh, repeat those rows one more time, and then um, you're, that's gonna be rows one through eight on your uh, nine through 16 pegs, and you'll have two pegs left, 
and you're just gonna repeat rows one and two um, again. So I will join you back up after you've gotten these next eight rows repeated, and I'll show you um, putting it through uh, the last two rows with the weaving tool if you need help with that. Pause your video and we will see you there. Your uh, pot holder should look like this. You'll have two last loops on here and we're gonna repeat rows one and two. So um, make sure you go all the way up to these first ones to remember or look back at our written instructions. Um, I do wanna show you a nice little trick. If you do have one of these loom tools, you could do the last couple rows using this one to lift up the pegs from the loops. So it's kind of nice. I'm gonna show you how to do both today just in case you're curious. All right, so um, row one is weave over two, under two. So that one's pretty simple. We've done that one before. Go ahead and place that loop on the first one and you're gonna go under with your weave tool um, let's see go underneath these next two here and pull that loop through and just twist it to get it to not stick and then we're just gonna pull through like that so you're gonna skip two and come over here and go under these two and pull through all right so another way to do that is to set this aside and use one of these uh, hooks here and you can pick up let's see I'm gonna ignore these two because we're gonna go over them I'm gonna pick up these next two in order. I'm gonna go from here and then to here and put my finger on it to keep it from popping off. So now I have two of them and I can place my um, loop over here and then place these back on. Look how easy that was. Lift up and we're gonna skip these two and come over to the next two here. And now that I, um, I'm done um, going underneath, I can just pull it all the way across to that last uh, peg here and then place my loops back down. There we go. And uh, now we just have one more row to do. So that was really simple and we don't really need that um, tool. Uh, this one is weave over one and under two. So just simply hook this one on and then under the next two. So I'm going to grab these two, lift up, place this down, and then put these back down. Again, you can use your weaving tool if you don't have one of these, and I'll just show you again how to do that. So I'm gonna go underneath here. We can go through a few at a time if you like. Uh, let's see, we're gonna skip these two. We're going under these next two, skip these two, under these two. So I'm gonna just scoop under two, go over two, under these two, and come up and grab it. And we can twist it down avoid those loops and then twist it back up to come in between twist down to go under those two twist up to come back up and we've come through let's do that again we're gonna go over these skip these we're gonna go under these two and over the last one so I'm gonna go under these the second from last and third from last go over the next two and let's see oh you know what I did the wrong haha <laughs> Let's see, over two, under these two, there we go. And pull, there we go. And then this very last one, it is really simple to just pick this one up. Pick it up, place the loop, and then place this one back down. And then we're ready to bind off. So the way we bind off, we're going to use our crochet hook. So grab that and we'll do that next. To bind off, you're going to uh, pick up one of the corners here with your crochet hook. I'm gonna pick up this uh, last outside one on this side here. I'm gonna go across the top here. You can start on the corner here. I just happen to go there. So I pick this one up. I'm gonna go into this corner loop and take the back loop over the front and pull through and go to the next one, pick up that next loop and pull through the next one and pull through. It's just simply doing that all the way around the loom in order. So if you need a longer video for that, um, I've got that on our previous one that I'll link down below. Um, but once you do a couple, just take one and place it back on the loom and it will uh, have even tension as you walk, go around the loom, maybe every four to six pegs. Um, I'll show you a few more. And then as you get to the end, you can just take them off and even out the tension along the edges and you've got a nice um, even weave uh, and bind off all around the edge. And I'll show you cleaning that up. All right, so I've done a few more. Just pick one and place it and continue all the way around. 
All right, pause your video and I will show you uh, the end here and how to finish it off. We'll see you soon. All right, this is my last loop here and I'm going to loop over and then we can just pull all of these off and then fix the tension on those. So I'm just gonna pull that loop a little long and then fix the tension on all these other ones. Just kind of go around, doesn't matter, clockwise, counterclockwise, just start in one spot and rotate around to fix that. Pull out the corners nicely. Just use my crochet hook to tidy up those corners and make them square. Okay, so come all the way around and see that one. Hold on one second. There we go. All right, so this is my last loop, and you can leave a loop um, and a tie a knot off on it if you like having a loop there. I don't generally like the loop, so I'm just going to go up through this like color of the same loop and pull back down and through. And then I'm just going to pull it back uh, underneath another loop and bury it. There you go. And it's hidden and I generally don't need it after that again. So, all right, so I hope you enjoyed making yours. Um, I really love the zigzag twill and I would love to hear more about um, your experience and what colors you liked. So be sure and join us on Good Knit Kisses uh, on Instagram and tag me at Good Knit Kisses. I would love to see the potholders that you make. We'll see you soon. Bye everyone and happy looming. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.